Hello and welcome back to The Raid Room. And today we're going to ask, why the hell isn't 10 GBE on everything? It's 2025 for Lord's sake. Right now, you're looking at solutions coming out from turnkey NAS solutions and even DIY NAS solutions that are costing a few hundred nicker, yet they're arriving at best with 2.5 GBE. And the range of solutions that actually have 10 GBE out the gate is seemingly getting more expensive rather than less expensive. So we want to address the question, what on earth are the problems and barriers that are making NAS brands not introduce 10 GBE? Now, before we go any further, we have to at least acknowledge I'm not going to say cynical, but I'm definitely going to say the knee-jerk reaction that all of us have, which is, oh, these brands don't want to give us 10 GBE. They're watching the old bottom line. I get it. I completely understand. And there is a ring of truth to that. They're trying to keep these systems as affordable as possible, or at the very least, trying to eke as much of a profit margin out, depending on which side of the fence you are sitting on. And a lot of the time when it comes to Turkey now solutions, Synology, you know, Terramaster, Acer Store, etc., etc., a lot of the time they're releasing the same profile solution and every few years doing a refresh and trying to maintain the same price point. And the problem is the cost of hardware goes up. And generally you do find in that profile that introducing 10 GPE takes a long time, if never at all. Sometimes you see brands like this one, this is DS923, which integrates a 10G upgrade in a series that never had it before but then they remove it on the next refresh in the 925 case and that's fine that's absolutely fine it totally isn't the stupidest thing I've ever heard and at the same time you have solutions where the amount of money being paid such as in the case of the F4424 Pro series over here they maintain the same price point but they leverage the money instead of external connections but into internal hardware improving the CPU improving a lot of the memory capabilities including the M.2 uh, classifications and more and ultimately bolster the internal hardware rather than the external hardware again that still isn't a good enough argument for many of you, though, why these brands are not integrating 10 GPE more than they are. Now, if we talk about 10 GPE, we've got to at least acknowledge a 10 GPE, you're looking at a gigabyte per second, or about a thousand megabytes per second, more precisely, 1024 megabytes per second, depending on if you are looking at decimal or binary, which is going to be down to your operating system, or if you're using it as just slave storage there. Now, in order to achieve that, with the hardware configuration of any solution, and let's use this one for example. When you put the CPU in, and in combination with the chipset, by the way, which is ultimately kind of like um, the CPU living within its little sandbox, its little playground, you have a certain number of lanes to play with. The CPU you choose to use will give you more lanes. It'll also let you know the gen of, which is ultimately the bandwidth or the discipline, in a way, of the lanes being allocated across the system. Now, everything about this system, let's remove it from there, everything about this system requires lanes. Those lanes can go down into individual ports and connections. They can go into upgrade slots. They go into M.2 slots. They go into the storage slots as well, traditionally paired. Now, most NASs right now, there are some super powerhouse ones that are running with Gen 5 and Gen 4 architecture, but the majority of middle of the road, 500 to around $1,500 systems run on Gen 3 architecture. And each one of those lanes gives you a thousand megabytes per second, sort of. Traditionally, the performance you get actually sits at around eight to 900 megabytes. Again, that whole decimal binary thing, but also just general throughput through each of the individual lanes. That means that if you wanted to add 10 GBE to your system, or at least add the option to add 10 GBE, you can't just give it times one speed on that lane. You're going to have to bump it up to times two to make up the difference to make sure you hit a full gigabyte per second. And a lot of the CPUs that these brands choose to use in order to keep things efficient over a 24-7 environment don't have enough lanes. Now, this is able to do it because that Ryzen processor happens to have a decent enough number of lanes to get the job done. There isn't absolutely loads. I think the, the newer generation, I say newer generation, newer generation of Synology, but technically an old CPU, has a lot more lanes in it, yet they didn't put 10 GPE on the new one. I'm going to let that go. Um, but when we're looking at a lot of the more recent Alder Lake and Twin Lake systems that have been rocking out, these CPUs have only got eight or nine lanes to play with. They can't easily add 10 GBE without borrowing the distributive lanes inside that could be used for something else. Now, you may have seen, uh, Raydow did a great video on this, by the way. I'll try and link to it in the description below. If I don't, let me know in the comments and I'll add it later if I've forgotten. But he did a great video 
where he basically souped up the B-Link ME Mini. And that is running on a Twin Lake M150 CPU, again, nine lanes to play with. And he used the one slot that was inside at times two speed and added an M.2 10GBE adapter, adding 10GBE. Now the brand in question didn't do that because they wanted it to be about the storage. They wanted it to have six M.2s and they had one of the M.2s have times two speed. So that slot there would be for the OS drive to give it a bit of muscle there. And the rest were at times one. So they were never gonna get more than about eight to 900 megabytes per second. And with only nine lanes to play with, that left that final lane really for distribution towards the network ports. And again, there wasn't a huge amount left on the table, hence why it was never gonna have to fork 10 GBE, but it gave at least option with flexible modifications and upgrades, unofficial of course, to add 10 GBE. But nonetheless, systems like these that run exclusively on M.2s and the B-Link we just discussed there, M.2s themselves, People will be furious, I would say arguably more so than adding 10 GBE on this, if you started inhibiting the M.2s inside these devices. Now, most of these retail for about two to 300 nicker. And at that price point in 2025, it's just incredibly rare to get a completely built solution to have 10 GBE at that price point. You can get some NAS motherboards, that have 10 GBE on board. Look at CWWK, Chang Wang. Uh, they've got an N150, an N355 NAS motherboard with 10 GBE, uh, but you still need to buy your PSU, your enclosure, your RAM, your storage, and more. But still, at that point is where we are actually starting to see brands consider integrating 10 GBE. None of the turnkey NAS brands, I would say, the ones that have got their software engaged, but the ones that are pure hardware alone, that's at the price point where we are actually seeing some wiggle room happening with 10GBE. But the problem comes next with whether the NAS brand should introduce 10GBE at all. Because even if some solutions, let's take this one here. This is again the F4424 Pro. This doesn't have 10GBE out the gate. It's got four bays of storage. It's got two M.2s inside. It's got two times 0.5 GBE. So it's got that nine lane CPU inside there, but there's a scaled up version of this, which is a four bay called the Max. And the Max has got an i5 inside. It's our Gen 4 uh, lane i5 processor, part of the Alder Lake, and it has got 10 GBE. In fact, it has two 10 GBE ports there. Two systems that look nearly identical, but the other one has 10 GBE on board. Why is that? Well, it isn't just because that CPU has more lanes to play with. It's because that CPU has the oomph under the bonnet to deliver on those 10 GBE connections. What I mean is, if this was an N150 or the N355 uh, CPU inside this system, fully saturating 10 GBE and consistently saturating it actually takes a lot of the horsepower of the CPU to maintain that. And given this has got M.2, so you could perhaps leverage those M.2s inside here to get the job done with a little less power being used thanks to them having their very own decent bout of performance inside and low I.O., Nevertheless, I can understand why a brand like Terramaster would look at this and rule out putting 10 GBE on this, even if they tweaked the hardware configuration to actually be able to stretch it enough to put 10 GBE on, because it would be a very unsatisfying 10 GBE experience, and you would have had to clip the wings of some of the other hardware of this, or perhaps even feed different devices into a bottleneck in the middle, and ultimately result in the system having 10 GBE, but never really having enjoyable 10 GBE out the gate. So now that we've acknowledged that we need to have a CPU that's got a decent number of lanes and a decent amount of horsepower under the bonnet to give us a fulfilling 10 GB experience, then leads to our next problem. And that is that for a system to hit 10 GBE comfortably, uh, or at least a NAS system, you need to have the right storage media inside. Now I've purposefully made sure to only show you those four bay hard drive solutions at the start of this video. The reason being that even with SATA SSDs, which have a promoted top speed of 550 megabytes per second, but realistically provide around a sustained 350 to 375 megabytes per second, even four of those disks in a RAID 0 environment will probably never hit 10 GBE because of the storage media overhead and even with a RAID multi-read write operation at the same time. So brands tend to not give 
10 GPE until they get to larger configurations which can deliver the storage media. Because if you don't have enough bays, you're never going to be able to fully saturate the 10 GPE as well. But NVMe, as mentioned, has made this a little bit easier to ascertain and things have loosened up. But it was one of the main reasons why, when you looked at the product portfolios of a lot of brands, it seemed super weird that you got to the two, three, four, five hundred quid mark. And then all of a sudden, there was this gap between about 600 nicker and about 1200, where there was nothing, and then a bunch of powerhouse 10 GPE solutions. The reason is, but the, it was because they had to scale up the system CPU hardware and the storage configurations in this void to achieve the 10 GPE. And all of a sudden, there was an accelerated kind of skippity scop through that middle section there. So one of the reasons you don't see a lot of 10GBE on NAS hardware until you spend a lot of money is because 10GBE has to be centered around a decent enough CPU with enough lanes, has enough oomph and horsepower to deliver consistently, and a system that has access to enough hardware to deliver on that bandwidth promise and the tunnel that it's creating. That, that is why 10GBE, even in, 10, in 2025, is not as common and accessible as cheap as it should be. There are just so many things around 10GBE that you can't just slam a 10 gig nick on the most budget NAS, and I mean the brands, not us, the consumer, who we can play around and do what the hell we want. You just can't do that. Things are getting better though. We're seeing more of these mobile SOC processors. We're seeing better graphically integrated AMD Ryzen embedded processors arriving on the scene. And particularly those AMD ones, we're seeing mobile SOC processors there rocking out with 20 to 24 lanes to play with alongside supporting numerous amounts of performance numbers on M.2 NVMe systems like this one, allowing for times two speed on these. Therefore, ensuring there are no internal bottlenecks to fully saturate one to even two 10 GPU connections. And alongside this, we're starting to see CPUs that arrive with Thunderbolt and USB 4 support as well. And as more NAS software starts to integrate and allow for Thunderbolt over IP or IP over Thunderbolt or IP over uh, USB 4 over IP or IP over Thunderbolt 4, whatever you want to call it, more systems and more software like Zimmer OS, for example, are arriving with support of that. And it's getting to a point with that alongside USB 4 to affordable 10 gig NIC adapters, meaning that 10 GBE is sort of starting to phase out because of things like 25 gig, 50 gig, 100 gig, but also direct attached USB 4 connectivity, having its protocol simplified, allowing for us to directly connect and get greater than 10 GBE with a lower resource overhead and more affordability. Native CPUs with native USB 4 support there, allowing to second navigate some of the limitations that stopped brands integrating um, 10 GBE on more affordable systems. So yes, 10 GBE is still sodding rare at that price point in 2025, but I think we're about 18 months away from ridiculous amounts of affordability of high bandwidth connections to, if anything, to the detriment of 10 GBE rather than to the betterment thereof. But it's still 2025, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe you're watching this in the future and you can tell me if I'm wrong. All right, why not? Thank you so much for watching. If you've got a suggestion for another raid room, pop it there in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.